Good morning, everyone. It is Monday morning, November 11th, so happy Veterans Day for those living in the U.S. I get a lot of comments from uh, veterans who love mirror shining their shoes, and some of them are really, really good at it. Uh, so thank you for your service. In today's video, I'm going to be making my case for why you should shine a brand new pair of shoes before wearing them for the first time. Now, I did a video about this uh, a couple months back, but I'm just going to revisit it because there I still see... Uh, People going back and forth about whether it's necessary or not so I'm gonna be making my small case for why you should and I'm gonna be shining a brand new pair of shoes personal shoes that you've seen already in other videos but that I haven't shined or worn yet uh, so let's get started okay so this pair of shoes is unworn unshined you maybe saw them in another video I did um, but I haven't worn them since then so I'm gonna get a chance to shine them up and make my case I've gotten messages asking me where I get my shoe trees. Uh, this tree was made by Steve at Beto's Leatherworks. But a good, uh, a good cedar shoe tree can be bought from woodlore.com. They make really good shoe trees and they're really affordable. So um, if you're looking for shoe trees, these are the Epic Twin Tube trees. They're really fantastic. And since I have a wide foot, they're really great for filling in wide shoes. So always use a shoe tree. It's probably the most important thing I can recommend for shoe maintenance. It um, absorbs sweat and the most important, more importantly than that, it, it maintains the, the shoe's shape and uh, extends the life of the shoe. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten messages from people with light colored tan shoes or in walnut who have spilled vinegar or ketchup or barbecue sauce or oil or something on their shoes and have completely ruined them. So once a uh, tan leather gets a dark spot in it, like um, from oil or something like that, it is next to impossible to remove. <clears throat> so I always tell people mitigate that problem by protecting your shoe with cream and wax. So if there is a layer of wax polish on your shoe, um, dust, water droplets, even oil will uh, have a much harder time penetrating the leather than if the leather is just bare from the factory. So. If nothing else, protect your shoes from dust, debris, and unwanted stains using shoe polish and wax. And wax is especially good at making sure your shoe is protected from nicks and cuts. And that's why I always mirror shine my toes. If there's uh, 10 to 15 layers of wax on your toe for a mirror shine, nicks and cuts will uh, crack the mirror shine they'll scuff the mirror shine but they won't scuff the leather I get a lot of repairs from shoes with nasty nicks and cuts right here at the toe and you want to avoid problems like that because even though they can be fixed it's really never the same so protect your shoes using shoe cream and wax so that's probably the main or my first argument for why you should always shine and protect your shoes before you wear them for the first time oh and I almost forgot be really careful when opening doors a lot of people put their toe next to the door and when it swings open, as they open it, they get cuts and nasty gouges right here. I've seen it a lot of times, I've done it myself. I was in a hurry, my foot was here, the door open, and boom, you get a nasty cut. And wax polish can really help in that area, so just be really careful and uh, make sure your shoes are protected and ready for whatever you're gonna encounter. Remember, your shoes go on your feet, so they're always gonna be in the, the thick of it. Okay, so first off, you want a, a really stiff brush, like a pig, br a pig bristle brush. It's a <laughs> tongue twister right there. And uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get off all the dust and debris from the factory or from the store. I notice there's always a lot of dust in the welt right here, no matter where you bought them from or if they're new. So you can just make sure to get all that stuff off. Um, you don't want it mixing with polish or the mirror shine or anything like that. So just give them a... a just a quick brush with these stiff bristles and you'll be fine. Make sure to go along with the welt. It's right down there. Get all that stuff out. And you're gonna be set. Okay, so leather is literally skin and some shoes have not been moisturized since the tannery. Companies get leather pieces, they cut them out, they stitch them together, they punch the hole, the broguing, and that's it, the shoe hasn't been touched. I mean, even in a year. So you need to moisturize the leather and make sure it's uh, hydrated and good to go. I've gotten a lot of uh, questions about what's a good alternative 
uh, less expensive alternative for leather conditioning. You can use Bic 4 by Bicmore. It's really great, it's, it's uh, affordable. It just doesn't penetrate as well as uh, Renovateur, and uh, part of its selling point is that it will not darken leather. So this is a great alternative if you don't want to darken your leather. Not that Renovateur darkens leather at all, but uh, Big Four is a really good option. It smells like vinegar, so some people don't like the smell, but it's another option. Another good option is uh, Saphir Leather Lotion. It's really similar to Renovateur, it's just less expensive, but it doesn't shine as well. So it's also a good alternative. You've got Saphir Renovateur, which does everything really, really well. It penetrates the leather, it, it uh, moisturizes really well, and it shines really, really well as well. So my go-to. You can use whichever you'd like. I recommend Renovateur though. And uh, remember to use less than you think. Okay, but make sure that leather is hydrated. As you can see it's already doing a really great job at getting the leather uh, moisturized. So it's like skin. You gotta make sure to put lotion on your skin. You gotta make sure to put <laughs> lotion on, on your calf skin and it will be really beneficial in the long run. So don't skip out on this step at all. And unless you're buying really high-end or bespoke, shoe companies are not in the business of shining shoes. They're not in the business of moisturizing or, you know, giving every pair they sell a hand polish. So it's really important that you do that. That you buy the shoe and you realize that the factory finish might look amazing, the shoe is presentable, and that's that's the, the company's job, is to make the shoe attractive and beautiful. But your job is to get in there and to make sure the leather is ready to wear and that it's protected from the elements, from dust and dirt and whatever else. Um, so make sure to do that. It's really important. Just take five minutes before you wear them. And if all you want to do is add a moisturizer and brush, I think that'd be better than nothing. But going all the way is always your safest bet. You can tell this area right here is dry. I mean, you can just see it and feel it. It looks really dull and uh, conditioner is really going to help just to make the area look great to make sure the leather isn't, isn't too dry just make sure to always get these hind quarters right here by the, by the ankle okay so just wait five minutes and give the shoes a good brush you'll notice that Moisturizer leather lotion is enough to make the shoe look much better. Okay, so just a good, a good brush. Just wait five minutes. Make sure to brush, and you're set. Okay, now you can apply shoe cream with a horsehair dauber, but I don't personally like doing that. I like using my fingers. It's better for control and you use less polish, so it'll last you a lot longer. Now. There are different color shoe creams you can use on a pair. Uh, none of them are going to be a perfect match, but you can decide to accentuate different shades. So, uh, unless you're using neutral to really, you know, not add any pigment at all, because you don't want the color to change at all, you can decide to accentuate the light browns, the yellows, while with a color like cognac, you can decide to accentuate the ambers and the browns and the uh, maybe kind of the reddish hues even. So. I'm going to stick with light brown this time. I like the shoe at this color, so we're going to be fine. Now, I found that sometimes uh, leather looks kind of pale from the factory. Um, and if you want to add that little bit of color, that little bit of pop, make sure to use shoe cream. So just put a tiny bit. Just rub it in like that. Okay. Take your time. This is why I like using my fingers, especially on brogue shoes, because I don't want polish getting inside the, the holes, the broguing. People ask me, how come I always get polish in the brogues? It's because you're using a little too much. Just use a tiny bit, use your finger or a tiny rag, and just be patient, put it in there. Be uh, especially careful around the broguing. That area is prone to getting cream and pigment inside, and then it doesn't look great. Okay, now let's say you accidentally get some cream polish inside the broguing on purpose. I'm gonna do that on purpose here. So let's say you accidentally get some in here and you can see there's some inside right there. Just get a stiff brush and just go over, kind of stippling, it'll come out. Okay, so don't worry if you get some in there. Just use a stiff brush and you'll be completely fine. 
and you can let the cream stay on for five minutes or even overnight if you'd like. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that if you really want uh, the shoes to look great. So uh, just be patient and make sure you get that cream in there and it'll look way better than if you just didn't touch them. Alright, so you can always tell the shoe's ready when it looks really foggy and when you start to touch it, it'll shine a little bit. And now you know it's ready to brush. So get a good brush uh, and uh, notice an immediate improvement. Alright, we're doing great. So just keep brushing. Um, push harder than you think you might have to. Just to get that friction in there and make sure the shoes look great. Okay, now if that's all you wanted to do, that is still better than doing nothing. So using cream polish and moisturizer alone is way better than just leaving the shoe untouched from the factory. Okay, so now let's get on to the next step. Okay, now it's time for some wax polish. Even if you don't like mirror shines, you should at least put one layer of uh, wax polish and then brush it off for a protective layer. I'm almost out of this, but I think I can scrape by. So just get a little bit like that and just go over the shoe. And wax polish takes a lot less time to dry, so you can just wait a minute or two. And this is uh, kind of like you're doing a traditional shoe shine with just wax. If you go to like a little stand somewhere, they might just use wax polish, which is totally fine. And I tell people, if all you can if all you can find or afford is kiwi, that's fine. I just prefer that you clean wax and protect your shoes rather than nothing. So use whatever you have. I like this really nice uh, tan cream by, by Saphir. Okay, just put a, a little layer like that. And then you move on to the next shoe. Just circular motions. And this will give it a really, you know, the, it'll give it the highest shine. Those waxes do a really good job of giving it a high shine. And then you wait a minute or two and then you brush it off. And we'll go from there. Okay, we're set to brush. You'll see right here, the shoe looks really really shiny. Wax did its job. That's just one one layer of wax polish. You can do two or three and just keep brushing and the shoes will look fantastic. If you want to stop here, I know some people don't like mirror shines, you can absolutely stop here. Uh, this is already way better than just not touching the shoe from from the store. Okay. But I'm gonna go full on and do a mirror shine on the shoes because I'm always paranoid about scratching. And I also, I also happen to think that a, a mirror shine looks really great and impressive. Okay, so we'll start that once I'm done brushing these two shoes. It looks really great. I'm happy with how they look. Oh, just slipped out, slipped out of my hand. But I just uh, was done already, so let's get that mirror shine started. Okay, so I'm actually um, uploading a video right now. It should be up tomorrow. It's just really long. I know I mentioned that. It's over an hour long. And in the video, I do a complete mirror shine from start to finish. And the video is over an hour and the mirror shine portion is 35 minutes. It's uncut from start to finish. So I'm not gonna do or record the entire mirror shine on this pair because it takes a very long time. But tomorrow you'll get to see that video and if you ever need help with the mirror shine, you can always email me or message me. 
Um, but I have other videos too where I show, you know, the mirror shine process. So I'm not going to film it all. But of course, you always can start off by getting a little bit of wax, right? And rubbing it in to the toe cap for the first layer. This actually seems to help people. You put the first uh, layer of wax, right? And you wait a couple of seconds, one second. <laughs> Let me grab my water, I forgot it. Okay, so here's some ice water. Get a little tiny droplet and you put it on like that, just less than you think. And you start to buff again, okay? And you repeat that process for 35 minutes or more, sometimes it takes, it can take you up to two or three hours to get that mirror shine. Okay, so just keep going and you'll be fine. Since mirror shining takes uh, longer than everything else, I usually just sit down on my couch and I have this little foldable table that I bought and I just watch a movie or watch Netflix or I listen to a podcast. Mirror shining uh, just requires patience, and it requires cold water and uh, a good a good rag around your fingers and a good technique. So be patient. And if you need help uh, learning how to mirror shine, I have a lot of other videos you can check out where I go into depth about how to how to achieve this look. Now, if you want your shoe to be shinier, you can just come back the next morning and keep going. But for this pair, I was happy with the results. It took me about an hour and everything I think looks great for what I want for these shoes. So I hope you like uh, the final result and uh, I think you'll see a difference. Okay, here's the before, bare leather, untouched, and here is the after. So as you can see, the shoe it just looks better all around. Uh, the leather is nourished. There is cream polish to add pigment, and there is also wax to protect the shoe from all types of uh, problems that can result from wearing shoes on your feet. So that's my case for why you should shine your shoes before you wear them. I hope you like this video, and uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Elegant Oxford. Links to my pages are in the description of this video. Remember, always put your best foot forward. The small details matter most, so don't forget to hashtag shine your shoes. See you next time.